Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we have pseudoscientist number 9. And I know the past few videos have been silly, that has not been my intention for this series, but there have been a few flat earthers, and flat earthers just tend to be silly. And today's video is not likely to be any better because we are covering Chris from Westchester County, who is also a flat earther. Needless to say, I don't think this is going to be a very serious video, but what do you expect when we're covering flat earthers? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's uh, 11.30, 22. Wait, why is he telling us the time? I don't think it really matters that his lunch break is in half an hour. And why does he also feel the need to add the seconds on there? Oh. Wait, he's American. Now I know with the last person, I did find it weird that they told everyone the date that they recorded it, but with Chris, I am going to make an exception. Given that he is talking about current events in this video, I think that is completely fine. Just as long as he doesn't do it in every video. I don't watch his channel enough to know. Just a quick question. Would you get into a car without a steering wheel? No, because you have to steer the vehicle, C correct? Yeah, right, you need a steering wheel. Well eventually self-driving cars will be a thing and they won't really need steering wheels but for now they are pretty much a necessity. Without it, you couldn't use it. That's funny because where is the steering wheel in uh, Artemis? I, uh, why are they getting stupider? Are they, are they trying to kill me? I feel like these flat earthers know what I'm doing and they are saying intentionally stupid stuff to try and give me an aneurysm. This is like seeing a remote controlled drone and then asking where the steering wheel is. Oh no, my drone doesn't have a steering wheel. I guess I can't turn it around. Oh no, I don't have a steering wheel, so I can't go around corners now. If only there was another way that things could turn around without a steering wheel. You know, I'd really hate to see Chris walking towards a cliff without a steering wheel because that is going to end badly. Or what is it? I, I don't know, they're calling it something else. Uh, let's just refer to it as Artemis. Well, the name of the spacecraft is Orion and the name of the mission is Artemis 1, as there are going to be more. Okay, that would be the rocket that I believe its trajectory right now is halfway to Earth or quarter of the way. So Chris, when you recorded your video, I am pretty sure that Orion was still in orbit around the moon. Yes, it was about to leave that orbit, but it was still in orbit. At the moment, it is on Earth. And what vivid pictures. Um, my question is, I could be sitting in my backyard <laughs> with my P1000, zoom in on a crater, and I have beautiful pictures. Very realistic, very sharp HD pictures. What does NASA give us? This washed out, um, unrecognizable uh, blue ball in space. For some reason, I feel like this is not the photo that Chris is talking about. Uh, yes, a very unrecognizable blue ball that I can see there. There is also this video, and yeah, you can't recognize that that is Earth right there. Uh, no way anyone would be able to tell that. I get the feeling that Chris has just seen posts which might contain the photos from his Flat Earth buddies, and hasn't actually seen the photos himself. That you can't tell what it is? Yep, I have no idea what that might be. No clue at all. <laughs> they can't seem to get the sizes correct. <laughs> Wait, what sizes are you talking about? Are you talking about the sizes of the continents? Because earlier, I thought you said you couldn't tell what it is. There's still no stars. <laughs> Chris, have you ever tried to take photos of stars with your phone? Because I have, and let me tell you, I am just unable to do it. And that is because of exposure. If you want to take images of objects as bright as the Earth, you're going to need a low exposure, which means that you will not be able to see the stars. It is such a simple concept, yet Flat Earthers seem to be completely unable to grasp that concept. And they've got this equipment that is supposedly state-of-the-art, when meanwhile, 
All you need to see a crater on the moon is a P-1000. Just zoom right in, it, right in on it. You don't have to rely on NASA anymore, come on. Yeah, why didn't NASA just go to the store, buy a P-1000, and use that to take photos of the moon? Why instead did they have to send up a spacecraft? And clearly, the only reason why that spacecraft was sent there was to take photos of the moon. No other reason. It wasn't like it was to, you know, account for what the conditions will be like in the spacecraft for when we eventually send humans back to the moon or anything. No, it was all about taking photos because that is all NASA does, take photo and lie. Apparently they just did a, a little flyby and they were approximately 50 miles off the surface or 100 miles. So, so somewhere around there. It was 80 miles. You know, you can Google these things. You just look it up and go, oh, it was 80 miles instead of guessing whether it's 50 or 100. 100 miles above the surface. So now picture what we have um, supposedly floating around right now. Uh, these fake satellites that are up there. Um, and Google imaging. Well, Google Imaging is basically a plane passing by. That's what they do. That's how they get those images. For some of them, they do use aircraft. That doesn't mean that they only use aircraft. They use a combination of aircraft and satellite. Supposedly satellites are up there, and then they're taking high-definition pictures of uh, Earth, supposedly. And they can zoom in on a house, all right? <laughs> can they really, though? Or do they actually use aircraft to take images of houses? Because as far as I can tell, the best quality satellite images that Google uses have a 15 meter per pixel resolution. Now 15 meters per pixel, that is quite good, but you're not really going to be able to make out a house with that unless it's a fairly big house. Hell, even Google says, the satellite and aerial images in Google Earth are taken by cameras on satellites and aircraft. So yeah, the images of your house are most likely taken from aircraft and not satellites. But yet, they didn't check out the China rover. Nah, why bother? Why even look at that? Didn't bother to do a swing by uh, um, through the Apollo 11 mission? You know, is, is the flag still there? Is, is it still, uh, you know, intact? You know, are the footsteps still there? Or did all of a sudden a big spaceship like uh, Independence Day come and, and rumble everything up and hit everything? All NASA does is take photo and lie. There's nothing else that it does. Like, does CC just think that the whole point of this was to take photos of the moon or something? That seems to be what he thinks. But that aside, the cameras simply would not have been able to pick that sort of stuff up. Because to take really high detailed photos, you need cameras specifically designed to take really high detailed photos. It would be like trying to take 4K images when you've got a camera that can only do 360p. Also, NASA doesn't really seem to be in the business of debunking conspiracy theorists. It's almost like they have something better to do with their time. Oh, it's just so much fun. This gives us so much material. Well, I guess that does make the endless misunderstandings of Flat Earthers truly endless. Uh, one other question. So, what I was earlier getting into is the no steering wheel. This is Artemis. Okay, this is the moon. Here, my fist is the moon. Uh Wait, this is taking a different turn to what I expected. I'm not sure I want to know about fists and moons. Uh, this might not be to size. You know, that does kind of remind me of something. This is not to scale, of course. Why don't you stop this bullshit? <sighs> Okay, so Artemis is going like this, toward the moon, traveling at 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 miles per hour. How it got to that velocity is, is beyond me. Well, as far as I can tell, the fastest that Orion went was 24,000 miles an hour. Outbound, I think the speed was somewhere over 5,000 miles an hour, which is a big difference. And yeah, it makes complete sense that it would be beyond him as to how it got to that velocity. And it's going to turn like that, right? And then right back to Earth, right? Nope, that is not what it did at all. It orbited the moon for a bit, and then it came back to Earth. So it only takes like three or four days to get there, but it's going to take about a week to get back to Earth. Now, I'm sorry. This is a planned, uh, this is like a, uh, a prep for putting men or women and men into space. At least he acknowledges that the whole point of this wasn't just to take photos. And it's gonna take that long? 
Uh, I don't think so. Apollo 11 was only there for, I don't know, what, the longest was a week, something like that, or seven days or something. I, I don't know, whatever, whatever it may be. So Apollo 11 did take a total of eight days. Artemis, however, is taking significantly longer, about 24 days, I think. Most of that time was spent in orbit around the moon, from November 21st to December 4th. It did take about five days to get there and six days to get back. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know why it took a few days more, because I just simply do not know. There's a number of things that could have caused that. But not understanding something doesn't debunk it. It just simply means that, yeah, I don't know why. This is the biggest bullshit I've ever heard. So how how does the rocket turn at that velocity in space without having anything to push against? Well, there's this little thing that you might have heard of. It's called gravity. Okay, so anyway, uh, so here we are. We're traveling back to Earth. Say it's just a little bit off course. Where, where are you going to go? How, how are you going to turn it? How are you going to move it? Just a little bit over here. Uh, we're a little off. A little, little more. Oh, uh, these little, these little. What are these? Like little rockets or something like that that are pushing. What, what are you pushing off of? Okay, so if you're in space and you throw something away from you, that thing that you throw away from you also exerts a force on you in the opposite direction. Now, rocket thrusters essentially shoot stuff out of them, which exerts a force on the rocket in the opposite direction. Very simple physics here. Do any of you even bother going on to NASA and, and looking at these pictures instead of coming after flat earthers and, and putting nonsense on their on their uh, comments, on the comment section? Doesn't matter. None of us really read it anymore. Yep, it's what I'm doing right now. It's looking at the photos that they've posted. They've posted a lot of them. It seems like you've only seen one or two. Have you seen these photos? Also, it should be noted that I don't really bother leaving comments on videos that I disagree with because I have a YouTube channel. If I disagree with you, I can just make a video on you. I guess these people don't because I don't even have to take a look at it for more than two minutes. And that's probably why you haven't seen the photos that you are saying that you want to see. To be fair, I didn't take a long look either, but I could tell that there were photos that you clearly hadn't seen, otherwise you wouldn't be saying the stuff that you're saying. But then again, it is easy to say stuff about something that you're not even showing us. But anyway, I think this is a good place to end this video, so leave a like and subscribe if you like this video, and join us tomorrow where we are going to be taking a look at the saddest Flat Earth YouTube channel out there. I will see you tomorrow. Between you and me, thank you for watching.